So thank you for coming. This is Noshi from Trade Genie, and I will be going over the trading systems I follow every trading day. So I go through step by steps, uh, you know, the same process. What I do every day, same process, is um, same same stuff. So it's it's a second nature. So I'll try to explain to you uh, how I do it, and then maybe you can replicate. And if you sign up for uh, any of my service, then you know behind the scene this is what's going on. So when I'm communicating to you through email or Instagram, uh, not Instagram, yeah, I do have Instagram, the Telegram, so email and Telegram, then you understand uh, the messages I'm conveying and what is going on behind the scene. So it makes uh, you comfortable and you have to, the person who is following someone, they have to have the same kind of belief, same belief. So it's the same belief system. So if I believe uh, this trade is set up to go down, then you, when you look at the chart, when you see the trade and you, when you plug that symbol on um, on your uh, platform, then you can clearly see that, yes, I see it. So for instance, if you plug in on Friday, if you uh, were on my list and you see the Baidu, so I send the trade Baidu short, Baidu puts, so immediately you can see there is a breakdown in the Baidu and there were airline stocks uh, going down. So, um, so when you see um, and you like it, that's where you will be, uh, you will be more um, enthusiastic. Uh, not, uh, not I'm saying that you get enthusiastic and you bet the farm, but uh, the belief align and then you are, we are in a harmony and then you have a better result then when you are following someone when the beliefs are not aligned well, that's the way for me the moment my belief matches with the other person who is talking um i i got to know that person and if the if the belief doesn't match then uh, i'm kind of i don't follow that person so it's hard so i will explain to you so this presentation of uh, so two hour one and a half hour minimum is unveiling the secrets of profitable trading system so i'll explain to you um in uh, in one and a half hour there is another um uh, session um, after this is called developing your profitable trading system so i go over in detail a little more uh, in the background so another one and a half hour then there is uh, another class i have called developing your trading uh, system blueprint so all this uh, go uh, hand in hand so one after the other and then I have another session called um, eliminating your trading mistakes. So if you follow that, uh, then you will uh, you will learn how to eliminate your trading mistakes because trading eliminating the trading mistakes is uh, that's what it is in any endeavor. When you eliminate your mistakes in any any profession, that's where the efficiency comes in, and you improve your results. So same goes for the trading. Um, uh, eliminate the mistakes, operate at 95% or uh, you know, the top traders, they are operating at a 95% efficiency level, meaning they are not committing mistakes. They're only uh, having mistakes in five out of 100. And uh, what, what, what do you mean by mistake? Mistake is not about technical analysis that uh, we, we have to be right in uh, reading the charts or understanding what the trade uh, will do. It's about and all these is stupid mistakes we do. We, instead of buying 10 contract, we buying 100, or instead of going long, we buying puts or chasing the stocks or chasing the trade, exiting too early, getting excited. All these uh, considered mistakes. So um, about 15 years ago, I came across and I was just starting my trading uh, and I was participating in a Yahoo forum at that time. Somebody mentioned the book called The Science of Getting Rich. And it was uh, it's written by a uh, uh, grandpa. And if he was alive, I would have um, you know kissed his hands, uh, named Wallace Wattles. So the signs of getting rich is a it's a two hour read. So I read this book on and off. You know I've read many times. Bought from Amazon. It's available on YouTube. You can listen to this book. So in one of the in, in his book, he's saying, leave every person you come in contact with with the impression of increase. So I, uh, when I read this, I, I said, yes, this is so true. So when you're learning something, you create um, your own community, like your friend. So 
have a friend, accountability partner, your trading buddy, and you share the knowledge. When you share the knowledge, uh, it comes back. And the way it comes back, the people ask you critical questions. So they ask you critical questions, and then you would go and look for it. And eventually, it, 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 it creates abundance. And then there's another quote he said, you get rich by doing things in a certain way. So what is a certain way that we have to figure it out? All the rich people, they are doing something in a certain way. So look at them and see what they are doing and see if we can adopt uh, some of their success in trading. Uh, another, uh, so one of my mentor, when I was trying to learn everything, I was doing, I, and I hear people, I met somebody recently and he's saying, I am trading Forex, I'm trading futures. I do stock trading, I do option trading. So how can you do all that? It's, no, it's, it's just, uh, you, you, need to be, you need to be really expert, especially in the beginning of your trading career. You shouldn't be doing all that stuff. So, so he uh, said, Noji, uh, you need to practice one kick 10,000 times. When you practice one kick 10,000 times, then you can practice another kick 10,000 times, then another kick 10,000 times. Don't practice um, 10,000 kick one time. So think about that. So I fear not the man who has practiced 10,000 kicks once, but I fear the man who has practiced one kick 10,000 times, Bruce Lee. So this is, is stuck with me and I strongly believe in it. Bruce Lee. Then another one is, um, so trading, when we are, when we are trading, especially the short-term trading, like option trading, we need to trade uh, those uh, stocks, whether up or down, which where the lot of uh, other other traders or the big boys are involved. So I call them dinosaurs. So dinosaurs, so this is what the quote, uh, his name was Chief. Uh, so he was at that time, he was 82, so 14, 15 years ago. Uh, God bless if he's alive, he's 97. And I don't know where, because he said, I'm leaving, I'm going to Caribbean Island somewhere in Cayman Island, and he was uh, settling down there. So dinosaurs can run, but cannot hide their footprint. So their footprints needs to be detected during the trading hour. This is as simple. So you know, go where the money is uh, flowing in or flowing out, um, uh, stock tanking or stock um, moving up with the, with, where, the bottom, where the big boys are uh, provided, we are not going for um, where the volume climax is. So we have to understand that there's no not a volume climax where we are the last one buying or selling. So a lot of things, a lot of time I see that people posting the charts, or sending email, uh, this is our proprietary algorithm and detected these five trades. And when I look at those uh, symbols, they're all overbought uh, or oversold. So they, they are, um, you know, sending something which is either overbought and about to tank or oversold and about to reverse. So this happened because they don't understand the overbought and oversold level. They don't understand where the trend has started, where the big boys uh, has started there. Uh, they got involved. So they, 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 they are looking at the trend. So trend which has been established for a long time and it's about to end. So trend which is about to end, they are getting in. So not the trend which is about to end, the trend which is started now, just now, you know, today. So today the trend has started. So how can we figure it out? The trend has started today. So so who is starting the trend is the big boys, the waves creator. So there, there, there's a lot of, so we can do the research and and find out who are the, uh, the big money is. So, the big boys have the complex trading strategy. They are the hedge funds. They are the high frequency traders. They are the institutional players, pension fund, program trading, sovereign fund. They have trillions of dollars. And when they are exiting, they are all exiting from one door, um, which is the, you know, from the, they're jumping from the window. So, so look at the United uh, Airline chart or Delta, or look at the uh, Baidu on Friday, so uh, or look at the Boeing chart is tanking is is just uh, gapping down um, uh, about two weeks ago I had a meeting lunch meeting with two of my friends and he said well I think we can buy by uh, Boeing and we can we can never go wrong so 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 yes you can go wrong provided you are a long-term uh, holder in Boeing and keep 
keep buying Boeing, like right now is tanking and you have the strategy to add more. But if you bought three, four days ago, the Boeing is gapping down, so you will go wrong. If, if you have option, then you will uh, lose 100% in that trade. So you can go wrong. So now, uh, and another thing, so there is a slide before that I explain in another uh, class is about you. So me, uh, we are all different and the trading is different. The investment is different for different uh, people. So a person who is 65 is different than a person who is 25, the different um, mentality, different mindset, different portfolio size, skills and experience, et cetera. So it's different. So one person is different than other another and the market is different too every day there is a different market so what the market is telling us we uh, uh, if not day to day but then at least three four five days um in we, we should we should have a pretty some some idea that the what the market has done during the last three four days so market these days is neutral or you can say choppy so market is choppy since the 28th of um december and the market established the new trend on 27th of October. So market established a new trend on the 27th of October or 31st of October. It has started and now is um, what 14th of January. So two weeks, almost two months gone by. So what is it? Uh, November, December, Jan, two and a half months. So two and a half months gone by um, for market to be up. And if you look at the 28th of December, where the Chopping as it started, so two two months. So at any given time, we need to have a system which fits not only um, so the the system, the training system should fit us, me, fit you, or who, or whatever is your style, and fit that market. So there are a lot of complex um, thing going on. It's you, then the market, what kind of market it is and then the system. So at least we need to have two systems, one for the long side, one for the short side, at least two. And if you can only trade on the long side, then you have to trade the inverse uh, symbols, which are, which move against the trend. So if we are only comfortable in going long, then we need to find those symbols. When the market is tanking, they are going up. So that's one of the strategy. So at any time, we need to have two trading systems. Um, uh, two direction you can have multiple trading system for one direction so uh, i'll explain to you I'll, I'll show you the 12 uh, systems and then i explain in another class uh, what are those 12 uh, in little detail about uh, each system so i'll explain to you so 12 trading 12 trading system for the long side 12 trading system for the short side so at any given moment, what is happening in the market? And then we are applying or using one of those systems. So the overlaps, the, this is the this is the Venn diagram where there is an overlap. So so Venn diagram, so this is the market, but and this is our system. So not all systems matching the market condition. Only um, you know narrow focus so one or two system out of uh, whatever 12 15 we have matching uh that kind of market and depending on the market direction so depending on the market direction and out of uh, let's say 12 system 12 long system 12 short system the market whether it's uptrend downtrend sideway we apply we use the system or the visual so so in the early age when i was trying to learn 10,000 things and going crazy on the internet and buying books. So again, I was told just master the low risk trading system. So I'll explain the definition of low risk. So master those trading system where you can use it again and again, it's consistent, it's, uh, you believe in it and uh, uh, there's a, re a reward to risk where, especially where you can, we can see where the risk is, ultimate, risk where we will need we need to exit so if we define that uh, then so we define the boundary that this is the boundary we need to exit and when if we go wrong this is the ultimate line in in the sand so mastering the low risk trading system i'll explain to you the definition of low risk so our job is 
to develop the low risk trading system, which is uh, not easy. It comes with the, uh, you know, you have to spend some time, like 10,000 hours, um, maybe 15,000 hours. So unless somebody feed you and you magical thing happened to you, you're lucky. And then in two hours, maybe you can get it. I uh, one, one time somebody sent me an email, they said, I'm, tes I'm te trading Tesla. And uh, I don't know, um, I, I make money and then I lose all, then I bring more money and then I lose all. So I asked him, okay, so what, what, why are you trading Tesla? So that's what I hear. He said, that's what I hear everywhere. People are trading Tesla and buying weekly option. So, and so I asked him, okay, how many uh, hours of experience you have? So he started like two weeks, just two weeks ago, and he is trading Tesla. So Tesla, two weeks of experience, weekly options, and he blew up $30,000. So so because uh, they don't uh, spend time in developing the low risk trading idea system, and I explained to you the definition of low risk, and then executing. So development is one thing, and then execution is another thing. So these are two different uh, things, so developing and then executing. You can develop, but you cannot execute. Or you find somebody who has developed the system, you take that system, you cannot execute. So uh, it goes hand in hand. Again, uh, the belief, what we believe. So the person who has developed um, and the person who is executing, let's say two different person, their belief needs to be aligned. If the belief is not aligned, then it uh, doesn't matter. Um, we will make a boo-boo out of um, a great system. So develop and execute. So th these are some of the trading systems I listed down and I explained to you in detail in another class. So you can buy a black box. So it's easy to, uh, maybe it's easy to buy, you, know, you when you get lucky and you buy the black box, but then uh, the black box is just uh, getting in, in, you know, you feed the data, uh, the other, on the other side comes out the buy signal or sell signal. And sometimes it's right, sometimes it's wrong. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. So, so ask the person who who had developed the black box system and assumptions behind the black box. So assumption behind that indicator which you bought for forty nine dollars because you read you saw an um, advertisement on YouTube that buy my master indicator for forty nine dollar and you can become rich. So, so that indicator uh, ask um, on what time frame. What was the condition of the market? How many trades? And how many? what was the win percentage? Uh, what is the average gain? What is the average loss? Um, so you would hear, they will say, uh, win rate, 98%. So 98% so win rate, 2% uh, loser. So that 98% win rate is like 1%, 1 so 1% gain. And the two losers are 100% losers. So think about that, but the, the big boys, they have mastered it. They have the resources, 200 years of experience and all the PhDs, et cetera. So they have developed the black box trading system and they do that. They make money every day. Chart pattern trading system. So you look at the chart and you can see what's going on. So I use chart pattern. A band trading system, which um, so uh, the lower, lower line of the band, uh, you go long or if it breaks, then you go short, or if it go, uh, goes on the top, is touching the uh, top of the band, then you go short, or if it breaks above the band, then you go long. So people do that, they align, they, they use the band trading system, such as Bollinger, et cetera, and they uh, use other indicators and then they trade. So it's for uh, uh, good for sideway market, I don't, I don't do the band trading. Then there is a trend trading system. So you find the, the, uh, those stocks which are, are establishing the trend or those who have established the trend and they pull back to a meaningful um, support or resistance and then you execute your strategy, support and resistance trading system. So uh, this is where, this is one of the key system is uh, you find the support, uh, the stock is uh, trading or that market is trading at support and you go long. Uh, you believe in that support uh, or you go short, uh, you believe in uh, and resistance, that this is the strong resistance and I need to short. So you short or you exit from your long position. There is a breakout system where the, the stocks break out of the trade, uh, consolidation zone, et cetera, gapping up. So you can use that breakdown system, 
breaking down the consolidation, breaking down the support. And then there is a gap up system. So I use gap up when the, so there are different kinds of gaps and you have to know where the gap is occurring um, in a trend. So the trend is there and then the gap up is occurring. So where the gap is occurring and how do you read that gap? Uh, whether the gap up is uh, above the resistance or below the resistance, there is a volume there, what else is going on? And same for gap down system. Uh, so when the stock gaps down, what else is happening? So look at the Baidu, look at United Airlines, et cetera. So gap down, gap reversal. So gap reversal is when the stock gaps up and reversing, the market is bearish, the stock gaps up and there is no uh, follow through. So you short that market or gap down and then you're going long because it's hitting some supports. So gap down, gap up, gap reversal, all um, you can, depending on what's going on in the market. Intraday reversal system, sometimes the stocks just reverses um, intraday because everything is reversing, some news is there and you happen to watch that symbol and it's hitting some key level and then it starts to reverse. That's where you are going long or going short. So intraday reversal system, then there is a moving averages breakout system where the moving averages, um, let's say 10 day exponential moving average is crossing the 10 day exponential. It's already in the trend because it pulled back to 10 day exponential. If that is your system, you're waiting for a meaningful pullback on some meaningful moving average. And then when it's breaking out from that average, you're going long or breaking down from that average. So, so put all these um, system um, or combination of this. So usually it's a combination of uh, many system together. So putting two plus two together. Now, the definition of low risk trade idea. So this is very important. This paragraph has many keywords and uh, it's important to pay attention to the keywords. So the low risk doesn't mean that we just um, uh, trading and, 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 and uh, risking only five cents. So that is not the definition of low risk. Low risk is everything is low risk or high risk. So anything is low risk and high risk is how we trade. So I explained to you the definition of low risk. Low risk trade idea is an idea with a positive expectancy. So positive expectancy means uh, positive overall. So you are, when you trade over the long run, the net result is positive. So your portfolio is growing. Doesn't matter, um, loser trade, winner trade, the average of those uh, have a positive result. That's traded at an exposure level. So this is very important, exposure level. This is where we, we we make mistakes, the exposure. So exposure level means whenever we bet the farm or we go, a, a, whenever we uh, get overconfident in one trade because it's looking so good and we increase the exposure at such a level that when it goes against us, we lose big time. Uh, so the exposure level. So what is your exposure level? Uh, what is your risk level? So maybe, uh, they say, experts say that don't risk more than 2% of your overall portfolio in one trade. So no more than 2%. So exposure level that allows you to survive the worst possible contingency. So the worst possible contingency is um, like the stock gaps down and um, you had a plan for, uh, um, let's say 8% uh, stop loss that I'm buying at 100 and if it goes to 92, I'm out, so I will lose 8%. But then uh, next, uh, but it so happened, some news came up and then it gapped down and it's gapped down to 20%. So, so and this happened, so this happened to all of us. So when the stock gaps down and lose 20%, even then you are able to survive in the short run because you have a you have developed this trading system which gives you the trade where if you take all those trades you have to qualify them it's not oh, everything is you know so what it means is that when you when the, your trading system uh, or your visual or chart pattern is giving you the trade you qualify them from on maybe on a scale of one to ten and then you're only taking the trade which meets the criteria and fall on the score of nine and ten so you take all those trades nine and ten you um 
trade at a level, exposure level, that even if one of those goes against you more than what you have planned uh, to get out at the, you know, stop loss, even then you survive and over the long run, uh, you achieve the success. So this is the definition of low risk trade ideas. So now what it takes to succeed, so what it takes to succeed is develop the system. Um, you know, be very consistent. If you are, uh, if you are ignore, if you are ignoring a trade, then must have a valid reason to ignore. And if you're taking the trade, must have a valid reason to take the trade. So, so uh, only you know during the market hours what is the, uh, how the trade is. Uh, you're qualifying the trade. So you must have a trading rules and checklist uh, developed during the planning process. So this lot of planning goes on before we come into the market. So a lot of planning process is done and then the execution. So when you, we develop the planning process and have a rules and checklist, we have an edge in the market. So an edge can be as simple as going to bed early and having a good night's sleep, uh, staying away from the um, like heavy food at night, staying away from alcohol, taking care of health, uh, doing some physicals, uh, staying fit and peaceful and not having too much going on uh, like life is uh, upside down. So when we have an upside life down, then we stay away from the market because we, we are not capable of trading. So the edge could be as simple as uh, doing this thing, sleep properly, have a night sleep early, wake up early, come to market one hour early, read the news, prepare everything and then uh, wait for the market. So it's like you know, when you come to the market in the morning, and you look at the clock and then you say, hmm, it's uh, 15 more minutes before the market will start. Not like, oh, the market has already started and I'm coming in two hours. Market In San Diego, the market starts at 6.30 a.m. So if I come to the market at 7 a.m., uh, I am not fit for that day to trade. I should come at 5 or 5.30 and get ready. Uh, and ready, ready, ready at 6.15, 6.20, then 6.25. Okay, 6.28, 6.29, 6.30. Okay, market is started. Uh, now we need to watch everything, what we have, and see which duck is flying where, which, which way. Uh, are all ducks in control? If they are not, then uh, figure it out how to uh, take action. Now, another step is, uh, so when we are ready, we capitalize on low risk trade ideas. So when we are ready in, uh, during the day, when the market opens, first we need to take care of all of our open position, whether to take the profit, cut, the, cut it loose, or uh, put them on a monitoring, uh, there is a two type of monitoring. So we do the overview monitor, uh, detail monitoring first, early morning. And then one by one, those symbols go into the overview monitoring. So moving it from one basket to another basket, from detail monitoring to overview monitoring, bring it back, only few symbols left where we go into the detail monitoring. And we also on the side, we are stalking the new trade, uh, the new trade. So there may be a new trade coming. Uh, you have a system of stalking it, and the stalking is a form of a risk control. So stalking is another form of risk control and stalking is another form of increasing the profit. So think about it instead of going at, um, you, know, you, you find the trade at 100 and you know the target is 110. So the target is fixed. It's not going to change uh, if you enter at 102 and then you say, okay, I like to make 10 points. So my target is 112. No, that's not the way the trading should work. The target is static. It's there for a reason. You have figured it out that this is where you will exit. It doesn't matter if we exit, if we enter at 105, the target is still 110. If we enter at 95, the target is still 110 because that's the way we are reading the chart. So now if the target is same and it's not going to move from 110 and it's trading at 100, then our job is to decrease our entry and the stop, and we figured out the stop is at 95. The stock is trading at 100, the stop is 95, the target is 110, so we know that. Now we cannot, the only thing we can move is our entry. So move the, try to move, uh, see if, we, if, if, 
if uh, the stock is pulling back and we can time the entry at 99, maybe 99.50, maybe. Sometime you just uh, don't, um, if you plan to hold that trade for a longer period, uh, we don't need to haggle over 50 cents because um, if the stock is trading at $35 and we try to haggle over 50 cents and try to time the entry at 34.50 and we never achieve it and by the time uh, one, one, and you never enter. And then after one year, you see that is stock trading at $70. So for 50 cents, haggle, lose that 100% gain. So if that is a long-term trade, so we don't uh, haggle too much over the price. But if it's a short-term trading, we time to, and we are swing trader or data, we need to really, if we are swing trader, we need to, to control our risk, time the entry properly, and then, um, either go long or short so the scenario is going long so imagine if you are entering at 100 and the target is 110 so and you plan to risk a certain number of dollars so uh, that, so it means you need to buy a certain number of shares or certain number of contracts but if you lower your entry to 98 you can buy more because your dollar amount is fixed you have allocated a certain dollar amount so now you can buy more shares because the the entry is 98 so when you buy more shares or more contracts, when you're exiting at 110, you have a bigger profit. So stocking is very crucial in the trading success, not only to control the risk, but to increase the profit. So be very precise with entries and exit. Uh, even though you are a long-term trader, you act like a day trader. So that's, the, that's what I'm trying to say. Even if you're a long-term trader, you act like a day trader. Even if you are a swing trader, you act like a day trader, as if we will be exiting today so when we adopt this this process we can execute the trade ideas flawlessly and playing the game perfectly and then have a process of monitoring the open trades in a detailed manner and then um, as the time goes by we step back um, in a deep uh, un, un, you know not involved in that those symbols because they are not doing by looking at the chart every five minutes is not going to do anything once you determine that this trade is is on um is um uh, is like auto on autopilot it's not doing anything right now it's just doing its thing so looking at the symbol every five minutes is not going to help at all so there must be a system of just watching the price move so on one monitor i don't know it's hard to trade from uh one screen so even in one screen uh, i can trade for uh, limited time so have some monitor one monitor just for uh watching the price only the price so by looking at the price you know where it is because you have seen it um you know it's trading at 105 and 50 cents and now it's trading at 105 70 cents or 105 20 cents so there's not much you can do unless you are about to exit. So when we are about to exit, then we can watch it's 105.20, it's 105.25, then 105.20, then 105.30, all that. So so that's where we watch the detail manner. Otherwise, leave it, this is, is flick, flickering, and you see the bid and ask. So, and then on, uh, at the same time, be very aware of the market condition throughout the day, especially if you're a swing trader, uh, you have to be aware of the market condition. So pay, so doing all this during the day, need to do all this. So now when we, there's another thing. Uh, so the market is one and there's you also, market is the given condition of the market you're using the trading system and then so overlapping and then um the strategy we will use for that given market we have to we have to know uh, what kind of a strategy we will adopt because uh it, so a strategy also depend on our uh, who we are so if we if we don't trade so if the symbol is moving let's say apple is moving uh, one is um, option trader, another one is uh, uh, only buys shares, or he buys option and the shares, or he's doing the vertical spread. Um, he may be doing the bull uh, call spread or bull put spread. So depending on what is his trading, uh, wh what kind of a skills he have, what he likes to do, how much time he has, uh, all that, the same market, same trading system, and a strategy is different or combination of uh, different strategies so think about that so so market trading system trading strategies is overlap 
So an, another and another thing is uh, what kind of trading symbols. So not all we cannot trade all the symbols at any given time. So it's ridiculous. It's really ridiculous when you hear people say that we have a system, twenty thousand symbols. We monitor all, and you can trade anything. That's that's not a. Uh, it's just ridiculous for me. You need to trade the the symbols which you have traded before. You understand how they behave, uh, and then you you're seeing it, and then you're trading it. So it's like you have five children. You know all five children how they. If somebody is quiet, you know why something is going on. He is he is it's not quiet. He must be doing something in his room. So it's like that. Or somebody is going wild. So why that? But kid is going wild, so it's it's the same, uh, same uh, philosophy. So do some homework, create your list of the symbols. So I explained to you. So there's a big bucket. So big bucket of um, like there are nine thousand stocks. So we cannot trade all nine thousand. So do some homework and create your basket based on some liquidity, based on the volatility. You you don't want to trade swing or options on a dead stock which moves 20 cents and if you're trading option then select uh, create the basket of a stock which are optionable see their study their option charts um, option chain some of them have they have option but they the volume is zero open interest is not there the spread is so crazy uh, so so if you are trading option on if you only want to trade option you ignore uh, those symbols and also select the symbols which are in the news so there's always something going on with that because for swing trading you need something which there's a catalyst some catalyst some news something going on so the stock is moving up and down so when you apply these principles to the baskets of the stocks on the other hand uh you come out with the different uh baskets so i came up with this because I play chess with the children. So chess is one of the game which uh, I think every parent should teach to the children. So that's my belief. I'm telling you my belief that chess, every parent should play with their children, um, make them smart. So so in the chess, they, we have players, king, queen, knights, bishop, rooks, pawns, etc. So I will explain to you how I, I define these different baskets. So king, queen, knight, bishop, rook, pawns, inverse ETF, ETFs, etc. So, so now I have a different basket, and I flip the basket during the market hour. So I'm looking at the, the stock which I define as king are uh, those where they are high price stocks. They have a they, their option is crazy. So because they are thousand dollar stock or uh, two thousand dollar stock, I'm not going to trade options on those uh, uh, only when uh, let's say spread but not i'm not going to buy a three thousand dollar option or five thousand dollar option i'm not doing that so these stocks they are just crazy they are high high price stocks so adobe ad uh, autodesk uh, broadcom booking costco intuitive kalec lululemon mongodb now so these are high price stocks. so uh, i keep them so we shouldn't be ignoring it just because we don't trade we don't uh, ignore the high price stock because these high price stocks when they move they affect the market and then based on these high price stocks, we can find something related to these high price stocks something uh stock which is uh within our reach so think about that within our reach we we tra trade those stocks. if costco is moving up and the costco is moving up every parking lot the costco parking lot is full like there is no parking i don't know about uh, your, where you are, but where I am in California, Southern California, every Costco is full. So when the Costco is moving up or down, I I don't trade Costco, but then I look at the other retailers and I say, okay, what Walmart is doing or other other retailers are doing. So things like that. Now the queens, so I call them queens. Uh, they are the ones which I trade, 
and I send the trade alert like Boeing, Caterpillar, CMI, DE. So if Caterpillar is moving, I'm looking at CMI also. I'm looking at DE or Disney or Etsy. FedEx is moving, then I'm looking at also at UPS or uh, General Dynamics is moving, then I'm looking at NOC, etc. Uh, th those stocks or high uh, Home Depot is moving, and I'm looking at low or I'm trading low, then I'm looking at Home Depot. So I call them Queen and I look at these. The Knights. The nights are the special stock. These are always in front of me and they should be in front of you too. If you're trading options and these nights, and I give you the reason, these are Apple, Airbnb, AMD, Amazon, Baba, Baidu, Coin, CRM, FSLR, Google, et cetera. These are, these, this is not the exhaustive list. So I, I ran out of space, so I just created this. So there's a big list here. So nights, they, the option spread is very narrow. So very, you know, liquidity is there. They are always moving up and down depending on the direction. Uh, their charts are easier to read. Once you get hold of them, you can see if you're trading every day or keeping it every um, one of those, you will be able to catch the move. And they have a certain rhythm. The rhythm is there. Once they get going, they are going. So for instance, the Baidu, it was constantly ticking down, constantly ticking down, non-stop on Friday. So Baidu was doing that, no, and uh, and uh, coin. So Baidu and coin non-stop. But if you look at Apple on Friday, there's nothing. I had a long position and I exited. And Apple, um, I've been saying, I said it in uh, way back in July when it made nine one ninety eight, and then again I was selling at one ninety nine sixty that uh, Apple has made a very long-term top at 199. It's hard for Apple to break 199 and 200. It has made a very um, bigger top than all the other symbols I know of. So so, so Apple, so uh, these are the Knights. So I, I do pay attention to the Knights. Now the Bishops are the smaller other technology stocks and I pay attention to these uh, the technology stock. These are the NASDAQ stock and I trade them. Uh, pawns are a smaller technology in other stocks. They are there. So all these NASDAQ 100 stocks, I trade them from um, one day is uh, Shopify, then another one could be a Spotify, another one is a team, then another day is a data dog, if it's, it could be a, a CYBR, etc. And then the rooks are the ETF. We must watch ETF of these four major markets every day and look at it, the condition where they are, what they are doing. And sometimes we, what happened is we just focus on one ETF and we ignore the other ETF. Other ETFs are telling us something. And they, if they are not in harmony, all these four need to be in harmony, especially DIA, DIA, QQQ and SPY. If these three are not in harmony and one is, uh, sometimes one is become the lead uh, uh, leader in telling us something and the other two become the follower or if the two are the leaders the third one who is laggard join the other one so so all four or especially three dia qqq and spy they need to move in harmony so whenever there is a, there is a not in harmony the market is is become choppy to think about that, we need to pay attention to these uh, four symbols. So you see all this going on in the market, but but so you don't need too many symbols, 9,000 symbols. You don't need 9,000 symbols, you just don't need. So, and then at any given moment, if uh, Delta comes up with the earning miss or some guidance, then look at, uh, and it has already tanked, then look at other airline. So you flip your, workspace or airline and you say okay delta has already gapped up and ual united has just started so i may go short on ual um so things like that bio biotech so uh li lily is the leader and what else is moving i can trade li lily is too high and it's already moving up but i need to watch other biotech uh, sometimes the gold and silver we need to watch. Sometimes financials, they are moving in harmony. If American Express is moving and already moved, uh, maybe I need to watch, what is it, uh, Square or Visa or MasterCard or something like that. Uh, Goldman Sachs, uh, JP Morgan. So 
So you see, uh, COF is repeated here. So I need to fix that. So one financial or two financial moving, what else I can catch? Which one has already moved? Which one has already moved and which one is starting uh, to move? Oil is, start, if oil is moving up and down, which one I can trade out of uh, major oil stock? Retail, if Costco is moving, I can trade Costco, but it's moving, it, come with the, uh, it has come with a good earning. Maybe I can trade something else. So prepare the list and there's no shortage. We need only 200, 250 stocks. Laser focus on one of those. So I do that. And the criteria I discussed, I told you about the market analysis based on the market analysis. If we if we read the charts daily, we understand the liquidity, the volatility, the we can apply the technical analysis. So don't trade the stock which has no detail. Um, at least you need two years of detail. And all these stock, they are high price and they have a reason for that price and they have a history. So if you try to trade the stock with just uh, $2 stock or $5 stock and it, you know, just uh, go up, you chase it, uh, it's trading at 45 cents and then you say, okay, buy 5,000 shares or 10,000 shares. I'll buy that 10,000 shares at 45 cents. I will sell it at 60 cents and uh, dream about this big money. And it literally doesn't go from 45 cents to even 46 cents. It doesn't go. It goes to 5 cents. And then you have a 10,000 shares holding. So don't do that. Do and trade only the one which where you can apply the technical analysis. You understand fundamental analysis. You understand the option chain. You understand the sectors. You understand there's a news and catalyst. You read can read the price patterns. You can read the volume. Volume is not like spiking up on a one minute chart. And I will show you what happens. I'll explain to you in a psychological way. Don't trade the stock which. Uh, five minute spike, 5,000% 5, volume. So it's just a spike. Do you really know what else will happen after that one minute spike in the trading volume? So don't do that. Uh, proper risk to reward ratio. So if, if buying 10,000 shares at 45 cents and then it doesn't even go to 46 cents, the risk is total wipeout in that trade. Total wipeout, zero, never recover it. Whereas if you're trading all these big stocks, um, the risk is there, but it, you have a high chance of survival even when the when you when the stock gap down compared to the forty five cent stock or two dollar stock or three dollar stock. So you get what you pay. So so apply all this, and then another. So I I'm I'm telling you what I do every day. So you must have a time interval. If you don't have a time interval properly laid out on your trading, uh, on your monitors, then you don't know what else is going on. Um, you think the stock is moving uh, nicely on a day chart, but it actually is rolling down. It has already topped out for the day and is, you forgot to look at the five minute chart or 13 minute chart or 39 minute chart and it's rolling down actually. It's, it's actually moving down. It has reached the top. It just gapped up and reached. So, uh, in a, in a daily time frame, there are 390 trading minutes. There, are 390 minutes in one regular session. Divide that 390 minutes in equal time frames. Figure it out that uh, if you need equal bars, so 390 divided by two is 195 minutes. Maybe you can put a 195 minute. So you on a day you have two 195 my five minute bars. One bar complete, it means half of the day complete, and another day, another bar is started to form. And then if you further divide it, you get 130 minutes. Another one is 78 minutes. Another one is 39 minutes. You get 10, 10 bars equal time of 39 minutes. If you can divide further, it's 13 minutes. And then the lowest, you can don't divide 13 into, um, like you can do four minutes or five minutes, so five minutes is okay. Don't be uh, too much after 13 minutes. So five is fine. And then there are some symbols which you can read on the tick charts, uh, the nights, the one I explained to you. So I read them on the tick charts. So you need to read, you should be able to read uh, some selector symbols on the tick chart. So, so go, you can go as low as tick charts, which is pure price charts. So 
have these time intervals and then look at it. Uh, this is a long term time frame. So these are long term. The trade starts. So uh, when you see a symbol during a given day, you put it on a daily time frame and immediately you have to know uh, the full landscape where on a daily time frame where that symbol is trading compared to the previous day move the last day move and then quickly look at the weekly time frame also don't need to look at the monthly time frame if we are a swing trader we is too much you cannot you don't have any benefit of monthly time frame uh, weekly time frame is a is the minimum um, to lean on to lean on the weekly time frame Look at the daily time frame and immediately look at the intermediate and short term. So short intermediate time frame should be moving in your direction, in the in the or if it's pulling back. So when it, you see the pulling back, then you have to know where you have to figure it out. That the pullback is over, five minutes is ready, and now I need to time my entry and go long or short. So these are the time frame. Now I explained to you about the process called. Um, Ebbing, Ebbing horse illusion. So you can Google Ebbing horse illusion. So you see there's orange circle and this orange circle. So this orange circle looks smaller than this orange circle. They are actually the same size. So what else is happening around? Uh, we get the illusion that this is something big and this is something small. So the idea is if you are looking at um, if you're just watching the five minute chart, the chart may be looking so good because it's giving you the illusion of bars moving, you know, the constant, there is a five minute bar is this bar, then this bar, this bar. And then, so it's looking good. It's giving us the illusion. Whereas on a higher time frame, that chart has no meaning. That symbol, that bar has there's no meaning it's the it's meeting the resistance or it's meeting the support or is is the move is not meaningful there is no volume but if you are paying attention to the lower it's it looks it looks uh, uh, we get deceived so don't pay attention just don't pay attention only to the lower time frame and ignore because you will get the illusion that this this chart is looking good. We are looking at the volume the spike. We are looking at the bar, and everything is looking good on the five minute. But we are not the scalper. If you're a scalper, maybe you look at the five minute chart or three minute chart. But if you're a swing trader, you need to go look at the big picture. So don't get this illusion of a lower time frame. So pay attention to that. Don't get deceived, and set some filters. The price filters, volume filters, average true range filters, some change in the in the price or volume during a given minute, but don't get that illusion that this is something big is happening. If a stock moves 20 cents, so so 20 cents move in the last five minutes. And then what happened? The move died or 500 percent move in the volume in the last three minutes. And then what happened? Uh, is that a volume? And does it have any meaning? So, so remind yourself. Another thing is, uh, you need to set some alerts. So, uh, set the alert for opening range breakout, which is meaning uh, there's a time interval and the stock is making a new high or new low. So, have a system of checking that the first 30 minutes have gone and now the stock is making its new high. So, you need to pay attention or it's making a new low after the 30 minutes. So whatever time frame you define, so it's called opening range breakout, or it's making a new intraday high or low, get the alert, or it's moved 3% or 2% above the previous close or down. So you pay attention to those above average volume, absolute volume, the stock trade at 1 million per sh shares per day and is trading at one and a half million. So pay attention, uh, relative volume. So this is another topic. Uh, the, the stock is moving at a 200% above is normal volume that time of the day. So must have some system where you can evaluate the relative volume at this given period is above average. So there must be something going on when the relative volume is high for that time segment. So I have the, I have a system, I develop the system of analyzing at any given time segment, what is the relative volume compared to the history. So do that, have a proper support or resistance um, a skill to read, and then when the stock is breaking above or below, then uh, pay attention. Uh, sharp reversal from the support or resistance. Have a way of paying attention to those. Some key moving average crossover above or below. Pay attention to those 
keep moving average because uh, others are paying attention. So there is something called the law of uh, wisdom of the crowd. So the crowd is usually right. So the you know uh, uh, like uh, the uh, so during the uh, Christmas uh, we were going to Zion National Park, and so when you go to the Zion National Park, you go through the Vegas, cross the way uh, you go through the Vegas, and I I did not plan to stay on the Vegas, but then there was a so uh, just on the strip we said okay let's go through the strip and enter on the one end and go through and uh, exit from the other. So there was line the lines of cars going to one casino. So the wisdom of the crowd is all these cars going into one casino lined up going to one. There's something going on, some event in that casino which is not happening to other casino. So so the wisdom of crowd. So if something is happening, the uh, and, and 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 some key figures are being violated, then pay attention because there is a wisdom of crowd. Sometimes the crowd is wrong. So if you can read, if you can understand that the crowd is wrong right now and i need to uh, pay attention to that and uh, um, and don't join the crowd maybe you have an edge over the crowd but um, so so think about it how many times you ignore the crowd and you are right and how many times you join the crowd and you are right so where is if 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 you come up with the the numbers and say, okay, I, whenever I follow the crowd, there is a wisdom of crowd. So the wisdom of crowd is that the stock is tanking, it has a high volume, the option volume is through the roof, the spread is so narrow, so there must be something going on. So, 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 so think about that. So, uh, and have a proper process of uh, stocking the trade. So two hats. So at any given moment, there's a slide, I, I'll show you some other time. At any given moment, we are as a trader uh, especially if we are swing trader and especially if we are day trader we are wearing uh, many hats at the same time during the day so think about it if you are a day trader you are entering you're stocking one trade you are about to exit from another trade you're monitoring one trade and seeing if it's behaving properly and uh, you're doing something else on another trade. So you have four or five symbols So you, because you are a day trader. And if you're a swing trader, you may have a 200 basket. So your job becomes circular. So you're moving uh, like juggling, so you're putting on the hats. So, but at least you must have two hats, even though if you are a long-term trader. If you are a long-term trader, um, we don't jump into the market. We need to act like a day trader. When, when we act like a day trader, we reduce our risk. Uh, and there's a limit. So I give you the example. If you are a long-term trader and you uh, you believe in the fundamental, then don't haggle over the price because if you haggle for 40, 50 cents, you miss out maybe a thousand percent gain in the stock. You're never able to enter in that trade. So uh, so there has to be some balance. So act like a day trader, even if you're a long-term trader, but, but figure it out if it's, you are putting too much and haggling over the few cents. So now the definition of stocking. So I'll explain the definition of stocking, and we need to we need to pay attention to the stocking process. So the essence of stocking is to find the best possible price for entry. Thus, stocking is another form of risk control. So we reduce the, our risk by, and when we reduce the risk, the exposure, the risk, we in we are what we are doing is not only incre decreasing the risk, but we are increasing the dollar amount we will make when we exit from the trade at a profit. So imagine instead of entering at 100, the exit is 110, you are entering at 98. So you're buying more shares. So when you end, exit at 110, you make more money. And then if you lose, uh, um, when you exit, um, from uh, so when you enter at 98 and when you exit at 95, you will lose the same dollar amount. So your dollar amount is uh, a loss amount remains the same, but your profit goes up, but just by adopting the process of stocking. So do that. So we go through I go through all that, and I have a team who is assisting me. And so there are a lot of things goes on. Initially, I was trading on my own, but uh, as things develop, and then I keep doing the adding things, adding, 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 so I need the team. So there's a team behind. 
So let's say we find that there is a trade in Apple. So there's a simple subject line. You receive an alert on this via email and telegram. Uh, simple that Apple buy calls. The month is February. Strike is 180. And then a price buying to open at five. So this is the valid price at that moment when the alert is generated. And I watch the price. If it moves to 510, um, suddenly then I send you the alert, the pay of 510. But it's usually the same at five. And in the email, when you open the email, the details are there. But if you read the subject line, it's there. And on your Telegram, this is the message you read. In the Telegram, there's no detail. It, it, it says detail in your email. So you read the email and you will find the details. But this is what you, if you, if you have a Telegram on your phone and you're driving, so just pull over and execute the trade at five. After, so you put your limit orders. Uh, don't chase it. It's not like this, the stock is just exploding and sometimes it does, uh, but so you miss it. But most of the time it's just uh, within the limit. So you put your limit order and uh, when you receive, so soon you will receive the targets and I call it green, yellow, and red. So I define the targets into three different categories. So you receive the target and you can see there is a potential. So you have to decide whether um, it, it, instead of buying five contracts, maybe you bought two contracts and paid little extra. So what that extra is, is this. So this is defined in the trading system and guidebook. Uh, pay a little extra, it's okay if you pay five cents when the option is trading a dollar. It's okay to pay 50 cents when uh, you're trading, buying Tesla, let's say, and the options are between 12 and 20. So, so if you buying, let's say the price was 12.05 and I send the alert, and it's trading at 12.40, 12.50, and it's a Tesla, you can pay because the, the, the option, the contract gain is 400, 500. So, so don't haggle over 50 cents when the option is 12. But I don't send this trade uh, often. So this one, this kind of trade where the option price is high requires a higher portfolio size. So it's not for, for all portfolio. Generally, the, the, the trade is between uh, the middle. Uh, between four and six. So mostly the trades are between four and six dollars. And mostly I buy in the money strike. So one, so it depends on the market conditions. Also, it depends how many position we have and what else is going on, the momentum, etc. Mostly the trades are in the money strike. So if you're buying out of the strike, out of the money, then you have to be right quickly and you believe in the momentum. Or maybe you're just taking uh, something your big event is coming up and you just buy 70 cents. So when you buy 70 cent option, uh, the moment the stock moves against you a little bit, that 70 cents turn into 50 cents, then it turns into 40 cents. So when we are buying 70 cent option, we need to know that we can lose all because it's a 70 cents. So there's a difference between a 70 cents option and a $12 option. So that's the thing about that. So what the traders do is, let's say they buy 70 cents and then they, they put the stop at 50 cents. So that's so loss is 20 cents so let's say buy at 75 cents and you put the stop at 50 cents so think about this you're buying an option at 75 cents if you put the stop at 50 cents which is 33 percent so 25 cents for the option is nothing it just move up and down you are choking yourself by putting a very tight stop you'll be stopped out all day long if you do that kind of a trading and buying as a 25 cents and then putting the stop at 50 cents and then you're getting stopped out so so think about what uh when you're buying it this this kind of option is a hundred percent uh, either 100% loser or 100% gain or 200% gain. So only, so again, the definition, I gave you the example, the exposure level. So the exposure level is such that even at the short term, you suffer a drawdown, you come out as a winner. So if you're trading a 70 cent option, the, even it goes 100% loss, you come out as a winner because you have a system of, you know, unless you have all the option trading at 100% um, loss and it happens, maybe on the weekly option. So that's where people trade Tesla, they trade weekly options, they get in, get caught, they, they increase their portfolio and then eventually they get caught and the music stops. So you don't wanna trade like that. So uh, this is some guidelines I have. 
Um, if you get filled, partial, cancel the order. Don't leave your buy order forever. If it doesn't get filled in five minutes, cancel it. Look at the chart, see if there's a pullback, and then uh, time your entry and ex enter again. You have a reference point, so do that. Don't leave the buy order uh, good till cancel. So don't do that. The buy order is only for valid for a few minutes, or valid is for not even for that day, it's for a few minutes and cancel it. Don't leave it for good till cancel. The sell order can be good till cancel and it should be. Sell order, you keep it good till cancel. Buy order is for a few minutes. So when we are entering the trade, so I am not only looking at uh, what is looking good, I am looking at where we will exit at um, profit or at a loss, so both sides. So the determining the target is science and art. And this is where the skills um, is needed. And the target are like precision guided missile. So they are hitting. So I define it green, yellow, and red. Long time ago, I came up with this. Uh, so I try, to, I try to think that how can I explain a complicated uh, topic in a simple way? So a complicated topic and so which can you can um, understand or I can, I mean, I can understand, or even my uh, little daughter, she would, she and the, even the kids, they can understand what it means by green and yellow and red. Uh, so think about that. So I have three targets and there's a reason for three. So green, yellow, and red. So I call them green and yellow and red. So I'll explain to you what is green. And then there is something I call beyond red. So I explain to you what is beyond red means. So, so beyond red is a special target. So I'll explain to you. So the green target is the immediate target. So think about it. If you have not attended the session, I explain in a, in a simple terminology or what do you call it, um, example. So the green target is the target which has a high probability of hitting the target, uh, reaching it, and within um, less time, like one or two days in a, in a swing trading, uh, two days. So think about this. If I'm traveling um, from San Diego to Seattle, so there was a time where I used to travel from San Diego to LA and I had to leave Saturday morning. So um, Saturday morning I leave and I have to attend an event in LA. So if I leave uh, Saturday morning on, from San Diego and I put the GPS time and it says 56 minutes. So there was a very high probability that when I leave San Diego, I arrive LA in 56 minutes. So it's so precise. Unless I take the exit and I still do it. Uh, when I start the journey, I look at the arrival time and then I compare it when I arrive. And then I see that what actually happened during the, my journey and how long was my journey and what was the distance covered and how much I deviated. So things like that. So if I'm leaving from San Diego to LA on Saturday morning, there's a pretty good chance that I will arrive in 56 minutes if it's saying 56. But if I leave in the like Friday evening on from San Diego to LA, uh, it may say 56 minutes, but I may arrive at uh, two hours and 56 minutes because the, the, the GPS at that time doesn't know what else is going to happen um, in Irvine or in between. So it's like this. So when we are entering the trade, we we know that this is the target, which is there's no resistance in between, and the chances are high that the stock will hit the target. And when it so it has a high probability. So it, unless a few things happen in between, the traffic jam or some news came out, and then it deviated, and then it goes down, pull back, and then it comes up, and then it hit the green target. So instead of two days, it took four days. So when the it takes four days for an option, when you buy at six, if it hits next day, green target, the contract may be trading at seven dollars or seven fifty. But if it takes four days, the same target, same target LA, but it's not trading at seven fifty. It may be trading at six eighty or six sixty, something like that, because of time decay. So the longer it takes, even though the target is is remains the same, the percentage gain or the dollar amount is less. So. But uh, just giving you the idea, but in case you don't know. So if you have six contracts, we send you the alert, sell one third at the green target. Sometimes we send you the alert to sell half uh, because uh, we know 
or I know that uh, green is, is prudent to sell half of the position because it took a while for the stock to hit the green target. So now we are selling it half or majority because it took the time. But if the stock hit the green target right away, then we are only selling one third or maybe not selling at all. So I send you the alert, don't sell, hold for the yellow target because the yellow target is like, in the analogy is like you know, from San Diego, the yellow target is like San Francisco. So we crossed this uh, LA in no time, in 56 minutes. Now we are cruising towards uh, San Francisco, which is a yellow target, and we are going to Seattle. So think about this, the second target is after the green target. So yeah, I call it yellow. And the yellow, so even my kids know that when uh, daddy is supposed to stop, when the yellow light is there. Daddy is not supposed to cross uh, the yellow light. Especially my son, five years old, she, he just um, like alert me. The yellow light, Daddy. So the yellow light. So the way the, the the way the yellow target is determined is there has to be some resistance level, some turning points there where the stock has hesitated before, some overbought level if you're going long, or some oversold level if you're going short. Something is there, and because the distance is further, so the 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 longer the distance, the less the probability is that it will hit the same. If I'm going from San Diego to Seattle, uh, there's a pretty good chance that I will arrive uh, LA alive. There's a pretty good chance. But if I'm reaching San Francisco, there is some chance that I will get the yellow, the traffic, uh, the speeding ticket, I may get into the accident or I may not arrive alive. So there is a probability there. So the same way, there is a probability that the yellow target will reach not in five days or six days, it may reach in 10 days, or it may not arrive there. It, it just pulled back just before the yellow. So there is some, some kind of a resistance, there's some kind of a turning point. So we read that and based on that, then we determine the yellow target and uh, send you the yellow target also along with the green and red. And then when that is happening, then I'm sending you the alert to sell half or sometimes sell the three fourth of your position, sometimes all the complete position. So whatever it is, we send you the alert and it's all. So now think about this. I don't know your, your situation. I don't know your portfolio size. I don't know what else is going on. I don't know it's you and it's me. So even though if I say uh, in the green target, I say sell one third, uh, you are the kind of person trader, when you see little green, you book it because you feel good, so you sell it. And um, later I send you the alert to sell half at yellow. And then you say, no, I don't have any, any, any stock down it. I don't have, I sold everything on green or, um, or you're just following and, and you have your own system and you say, no, I will not sell even a little bit at yellow, I will wait for the red because I see something. So you seeing something which I'm not seeing it and it's good that you seeing something better than uh, than what I'm seeing. But in general, if eight contracts were bought, sell four or six. So I send you the alert and I have a way of documenting the alert, what kind of a trade alert, uh, sell alert I have sent you. So I have a, a system where I track that I send this to one third or sell half or sell majority. So I know all that and accordingly I send you the alert. So sometimes I send you the sell rest. Um, if I have sent you the alert before, sell half, then prudent thing is to sell rest. So depends on what is going on, I send you the alert. Now the red target is like going reaching to the Seattle. Eventually the stock is, uh, when you leave San Diego, you go to LA, then you go to Santa Barbara, San Francisco, then you are eventually arrive at Seattle. And um, so, but Seattle is far. So the other day when we were traveling, so, uh, so I put it on the GPS and it says Seattle, uh, 20 hours from San Diego, 20 hours. So said, are you kidding me, 20 hours? I have to travel straight driving and no traffic. And I'm not taking any exit for the gas or any, you know, Starbucks, any meal, I'm just driving on a machine driven car and I'm reaching Seattle. So GPS is assuming that's what you're doing. 
20 hours straight, but it's not going to happen. I will arrive. I know I will arrive after five days because I will stop somewhere in Santa Barbara, then I'll stop at San Francisco, then maybe I take a detour. So that's why the I may never even go to Seattle. I may even, and this is what happened to me one time, I just uh, stopped at San Francisco and never uh, went beyond. And so I came back home. So there is a 70% probability of its stock doing the same philosophy. So the longer the distance, the less is the probability of a stock hitting the target. And the time horizon goes also further. So time, if the GPS is saying 20 uh, hours, is not actually 20 hours, it's like five days. So, and then the red target, there's a very high probability of, because it has a major resistance and a major turning point or a major overbought level. So a high probability of a stock pulling back significantly after hitting the target. But I do send you uh, not, not, it's not like if we enter at 100 and 110 is a major turning point, we will exit at 109 or 108, not at 110 because 110 we will never see it. So it depends what else I have sent you. I send you the sell rest alert. So, or sell all. So this is the definition of green, yellow, and red. Now there is something I call it. Uh, so th these are the steps you need to take. So sometimes, so the way the stock works, when the stock gaps above the resistance level, so there is some major resistance. And when the stock gaps above the resistance, it has created its own life. It's like it has taken its own life uh, not taken, not, it's not like died. It created this new journey. So when the stock break the resistance, especially via gap up. So when the stock gaps above a certain major resistance, it creates a new leg up. It's like you, you go to the hotel, you take an elevator. So if you, let's say you are going somewhere and it says uh, your destination is 110th floor. So the elevator is not going straight to 110. Maybe they will say, okay, take the elevator to 60th floor and then you will come out and then you will take another elevator and it will take you to 110th floor. So it's, uh, and then 110th is like a penthouse over there and uh, it's beautiful. So, so this is the way the stock works. So there is, so, so think about it, the 60th floor is the resistance level. So most of the stock they go to the 60 floor and they come down then they go up and then they come down but when when you take another elevator and going to 110 you take that elevator it's going to 110 or 120 is going to double the price so when the stock conquers some major resistance in a meaningful way and the most meaningful way in my opinion is the gap so gap above with the volume and it stays above that resistance level. So it creates its own landscape. It creates its new uh, destination. So when that happens, the prudent thing is, there are several things you can do. If it's hitting at the red target uh, and it's not doing what I just described, you have to sell it because then it's uh, gonna pull back. So you go to the 60th floor and then now you're coming down to the first floor. So you sell. So when we see this, I send you the alert. But if it's making its own new journey, you can do many things. You can add to the existing position. You can sell the existing position because you have uh, gain. You can sell those contracts and buy more of a smaller price or buy another strike. Maybe you buy another month, another strike. So there are many, many things you can do. You can create a vertical spread. So you lock your game. So these are the strategy. So the same symbol, same system, uh, different people adopting the different strategy depending on what the stock is doing at any given moment. So when this phenomena is happening, I send you the revised red target. I, I tell, I don't know who is holding what because I'm not doctor. I don't have a way of knowing your what, what you are doing. <clears throat> the thousands of members, I have no idea, unless they're communicating and say, telling me that I did this and what you think. So markets are dynamic, traders need to be flexible. So you need to be uh, very flexible and flexibility works on both sides, on the targets get expanded and the target gets shrinked. So this is where the traders lose money. The they don't realize the targets have gone sh uh, shrinked uh, and the meaning of uh, the shrink, what I mean by shrink is that when we enter at 100 and the target was 110, 
but because of all the resistance and all the thing happened between 100 and 110 now it the market has created a new resistance level and it is at 108 and if we are rigid that no i will sell at 110 is not going to happen the stock has hit 108 and now it's coming down at 100 and it will go to 90 and it will go to 80. so 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 the targets shrink because of the the things happen so it's like this we are going from san diego to seattle and then um even before reaching seattle something happened and then you come back or uh you reach seattle and then you get energized so think about it you reach seattle and then you get energized something positive happened and then you said okay you know what i i go all the way to vancouver and it happened to me one time i was in virginia uh, where i was I'm forgetting you know where the ben ben jerry factory is so i was skiing and when i was about to come back i was with a friend and i saw a sign saying montreal 85 miles or something like that so i said oh montreal let me see how the uh, let's let's go to the border and uh so new journey i started i made instead of coming down towards new york i made a u-turn and i started driving and i drive drove 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 and i ended up in the canadian border and i did not have a document and the officer they let me make a u-turn and i come back alive so so i created a new journey and i went into canadian border and i went into the inside the canada so so think about this if the stock you reach you reach the let's say you reach seattle and then something happened and then you are traveling a new new destination so you don't want to make a u-turn from seattle so this is what the market does uh sometimes and it does it shows you most of the time it shows you through the gap so it shows through the gap gap and the volume is there so try to read the gap up and the gap conquering a major resistance level so various reasons to revise the red target when that happened i send you the revised target if this phenomena is happening in the pre-market i send you the strategy to hold the red uh, so i give you the level i say okay this market is about to gap up let's say we are long and if it does this during the first 15 minutes um do this if it does this then do that because um uh, when, when the market is trading in a pre-market, you have to read the highs and lows, and then you have to know when the when the regular session opens, where it will land. It's like, is it when it's going to land? Is it going to create a twinkle, twinkle, little star kind of scenario, or is it is it going to fire a cannonball? Uh, first, it fires, it it creates a twinkle, twinkle, little star. It just lands somewhere, and then like fire, and then it, it starts to move up up and up and up so when that phenomena is happening you know that the cannonball is fired on a china wall and the china wall is damaged now and there's no way the stock is coming down it's going the other side of the china wall and it goes further further to Mong mongolia or whatever so think about that look for the cannonballs or the gap after the gap up so revisions of the target is sent so adjusted upward for calls and the same cannonball can be fired to the downside. So when that happened for the puts, I send you the alert, I replace the target. So I move the third target to second and second to first. And I send you the alert saying, if you're holding it, this is the, sometimes we have not sold anything. It's just, we get lucky. So that's called luck when you enter a trade and then the, go long and then the very next day, the stock gaps up. There is not something you did, uh, it's a skill, it's just luck. So think about it, you enter today long and tomorrow the stock gaps up. Unless all the positions are gapping up the day you enter and the next day it gaps up, then you are genius. But if uh, out of uh, 15 position, one of them gaps up, then it's luck. So so think that we need to differentiate between the skill and luck. So, and then the target may also shrink. So we need to recognize that the target is shrinking. If it's shrinking, then you need to don't be rigid exit from the trade now i maintain a various metrics so i know which one i have sent and i send you 
uh, the trade alert accordingly. Sometimes the trade I send, I give you the price range because it's moving such a way that there's no fixed price for you to exit because it's so dynamic that I give you the range, the exit within this range. I uh, anticipate and calculate what would be the option price at this when the stock is going to hit this target. And this will be the option price, bid price, not the ask. And I send you the range, so you close. Sometimes we need to close by the market. Another condition is this, which traders don't realize. Sometimes it doesn't matter how good is your position. If the market is hitting some major target or major resistance, it doesn't matter how good is your individual position. That position will eventually get affected because the overall market is getting affected. So overall market has started to pull back and your position individual symbol is looking good. You still need to close your position because the overall mark, eventually that position will pull back. So when that kind of phenomena is happening, so uh, so we need to close the position when the major index is hitting a major target. So, so think about this. You can even set a conditional order where the major index hit this target, close uh, this position. You can even set the target. I'm just giving you an example. Sell my Apple calls when Baidu hit this target. So these are called conditional orders and it's available on your brokerage platform. So you can do all this. So, so again, and also need to watch the pre-market uh, situation. You need to watch the aftermarket if there is an earning news or something is coming up. So we need to watch the pre-market situation, need to watch the upper aftermarket situation where the high and the low is made, uh, and especially if the event has occurred. If the major event has occurred, such as earning, et cetera, and the stock is gapping up in the pre-market hours, it better gap above the high of the pre-market. If it's not, then the stock has done its thing in the pre-market hours, and you're not going to see any action in the regular. If, if, if you see it, it's, it's a trap. So think about that. So I send you the pre-market alert um, so you can take action. Now, once you cash the bees, so this is where the traders don't make money. They, they have this need to be right and need to feel good. So when you combine the need to be right and need to feel good, we, 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 we hurt ourselves. And so need to uh, feel good is we only feel good when we close a trade with gain. That's where we feel good. So, and, 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 and we have a need to feel right. So when you, we close the trade with the gain, we prove to ourselves that we are right. Look at me, I'm genius. I'm closing this trade, making $100 and I need to, uh, so need to feel good and need to be right. And when we close the trade at $100 gain, the decision comes out that, hey, you took this trade and you locked this $100 gain, you were right. So right and feeling good. So that, that's not the right strategy. So, so we, need to, we need to understand how we can maximize. Once we have a winner in our hand, how to hold the winner for a longer period or how to convert that winner into a bigger gain. What we do, if we have four open positions, Three are losers and one is again uh, winner. So three uh, losers, they are losing combined, let's say loss of $1,000. And the winner have a, uh, win a gain of $1,000. So what we do, we close those three losers and we are feeling bad because our decision was wrong. We open four trades and three are losers. So it means we were wrong 75% of the time and only one winner, now we are not feeling good. The, our decision was wrong because those three traders are loser and we are feeling bad because we are uh, taking a loss of $1,000. Now what are we going to do? We will close that winner at $1,000 and the net result, zero loss. So when we have a zero loss, we took this, uh, closed this big beast, which is about to turn into a big beast of winner. We close it to, to make ourselves feel good that we didn't lose money for that day. So we did that and we feel good. Now next day, when the next day open, what we do, now we are looking for a new trade. 
and think about that. The, the, the trade which we close, it may it may pull back. Thousand dollar may become six hundred, then six hundred become twelve hundred and two thousand dollars. But um, what we do, we look for the new trade because now we are in cash and we need to look for the new trade. And in order to open a new trade, think about all the things I I told you. So we have to go through all that process for the new trade and the decision we are making. So when we when we open a trade, we make a decision. We reach a certain fort. I remember I used to consult for Eli Lilly. I was one time I was a, a consultant for Eli Lilly, and I used to travel to a city named Ben near Chicago. And then when I arrive at night time, and they, the first time I arrived, and they gave me a rental car at the airport where there were only me. I was the only person. And uh, I didn't ask for anyone the direction. And then I reach a fork where it says turn right or turn left. And I had no idea whether I need to turn right or left. But then I said, huh, maybe I need to turn left. So I turn left and I that was a right decision. And I arrived in my hotel and next day I went to Eli Lilly. So this is the same way we, we, we are trading. When we reach a fork and we are about to make the decision, at that time, you better be right because you may turn right, and that's where the bad guy is with the chainsaw, and he's about to kill us. Uh, so th that kind of scenario, you know, when we see in the movie Cornfield, we turn right or turn left, they show it from the drone. So that kind of situation exists in every trade we open brand new. But then sometimes we get right, and then we end up in the hotel and we say, yeah, we made the right decision. I'm in the hotel. So, but sometimes we just go and go and go and reach somewhere, never, never ending road. So think about this, you are, you have a winner in hand, you closing it to make yourself feel good. And, and you can show to yourself that the net result was zero. So don't do that. You can close those three loser trade. And uh, maybe next day, the, the money you have from those three losers, if the next day the trade, the one you have the winner and is showing a new sign, uh, maybe is going into Vancouver from, you know, from Seattle, maybe you put that money because you already have the winner in hand, you read it correctly. So in order to do that, so these are the trading strategy you can adopt. You can add to the existing position. You can roll up by the new strike, same month, so if we have a March calls, uh, let's say we have a March call, uh, we bought, um, let's say 105 strike when the stock was 100 and it's trading at 110, maybe we can sell 105 strike and add another 110. Maybe if we had a February option and it's looking good now, we don't need to add a February option. We need to buy March calls. Maybe we can buy um, 110 strike or something like that. Buy a new strike, new month or this new strike, same month. Maybe we can uh, sell uh, 110 uh, strike against our long calls. So we, we created the spread. Now we have captured the gains and the, maybe the rest is, we let it, let it, uh, let the straight uh, do its thing. So different thing we can do. It depends on our appetite and the skill. Another thing, whenever a news update, so keep an eye on the news. So I keep an eye. If any, something new or newsworthy, I send you the alert. I prepare the, for most of my trade, I post it on my blog on Trade Genie. And I'm posting this on a YouTube channel. So I've created a fundamental analysis. So there's something called rational analysis and we need to do that. So the rational analysis is when you combine the fundamental with the technical. So the Venn diagram, if you create the fundamental into technical, the overlap, that's where the most of the winners trade are when you combine the fundamental with the technical so become a rational trader so i do that i post the on my blog and i share in the facebook group and other 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 places volume update if i see something worthwhile i send you the volume update and i send you the alert to get ready to log in so all this is going on sometimes so there's something sometimes people say that never 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 ever uh, buy average down a losing trade so in my opinion, this is uh, not the right you know, strategy, never, never, because if you bought something at 100 
and you know that's going to 110. And now it's trading at 95 or 96, let's say, and it's making a rebound. So it took a time um, for a few days and it just held on at 102, 103, something like that. And then it, it didn't go to 110, it's just uh, pulled back below 100, now it's trading at 98. And now it's making a reversal, moving up. So your option which you bought at five is trading at three. Now you have a concrete reason. The reason which was valid at 100 is still valid at 98, but the options are trading at $3. So, so why not buy some more? So when I see that, I send you the alert to buy more at $3. Sometimes, uh, another scenario, you enter at 100 and uh, the target is 110 and it's trading at 104 and you have a gain. So the $5 option is trading at six. Now there's something happening at 104 level where there is a new catalyst. So isn't it um, prudent to add more at the higher price because it's a new catalyst and the stock is doing what you wanted to do, what you expected, and is doing it at 104. You're already at 100. The option you were trading at five, now is trading at six. Maybe you can average down. Maybe you can add another month at that time, maybe another strike, or maybe you can buy some shares if you don't want to invest in the stock. Uh, in the contracts and the options. So maybe you say, okay, you know what? 104 new catalysts. I, I don't want to put more money in the option, but I can buy 100 shares. So I do that average up or down. I send you the alert to buy more or buy more at the higher price or lower price. So it goes both ways. If you want to enroll in many of our services, you can send email to success at tradegenie.com. And this is our phone number, 212-930-2245. And the Trade Genie is almost open 24 hours. There's a two-hour gap where we are not in the office. There is someone in the office to answer your questions, your email, et cetera, even on the Christmas day, even on the New Year's Eve. So send an email at success at tradegenie.com if you have any question or when you receive our um, email about our offers so you can enroll or just go to tradegenie.com there are two pages one is the experience level page and then there is a, a beginner level so so when i started the service uh swing option service um so i was sending the alert at eight dollars nine dollars and then i received the uh, started receiving inquiries hey uh you don't send any alerts for three dollar four dollars so i created a lighter version called swing light so swing light is uh, a lesser price, it's 147 per month, and I send a uh, smaller price option. So if you have a smaller portfolio, less than 10,000 or 5,000, so you enroll in a swing light, which is a lighter version of a swing. And if you are into vertical spread, you, know, you want to trade vertical and you don't have top. So we have a, a service on ETF. Now the, uh, the most important service out of all this, even if you are a member, enroll yourself for the market trend service which i will explain to you in another session it, it requires a complete session which is a market trend service market trend service is is a service so 80 percent of your success actually you divide your success so you can say um 60 percent of your success is depends on you and 30% or so depend on understanding the market and the rest of the 10% is on your risk management. A little bit left on acquiring the skills. So when you acquire the skills, when you acquire the risk management, when you understand the market and you understand yourself, when you put all these four things together, you understand yourself, you understand the market, you understand the risk management, and then you have a proper skills to trade, when you put all this scale in and scale out you have a winning formula so there is a service which i offer at 97 for the whole year it's about the market a market uh, understanding the market so i will explain to you in detail in another uh, session what that service is about but it's 97 for the whole year in that service you receive it's a world class I, I'm I'm uh, I'm bragging right now, uh, and it's true that it tells you exactly what the trend is. There are three kinds of trend: minor trend, intermediate trend, and the major trend. 
and I follow that myself. And I created the software where it tells you exactly what is the trend. And not only the trend itself has no meaning because the trend can be choppy, the trend can be weak, or trend can be uh, strong. So not only if somebody tells you it's trending, then you need to ask the person, okay, what is the strength behind the trend? So, so, so the person needs to tell you that the strength is strong or the strength is weak. So I go deep dive into, um, I feed the data and I come out with the answer. I used to do it uh, manually and I used to sleep at 12 or 11 at night time. I used to do that, but I programmed it. And now my software tells me what is the strength of the market at any given moment on the, during the day, especially at the end of the day. Five times a week, I do the analysis completely, and I give you that analysis at for 97 for the whole year. And the reason I'm, uh, I want to do that, I can give you for free, but you you need to understand if you pay, then you pay attention. It tells you at any given day, at, at, at the end of the day, or during the given day, I send you the alert. It tells you what is the strength. It tells you about the, the trend and the strength, and it gives you the warning shots also. So I put it. In, in my market report, I send you the warning shots and during the day I update you. And it also tells you about the volatility of the of the trend. You have to understand the volatility. If Is it a quiet market? Is it a normal market? Is it a very volatile? Is it a volatile? What else is going on? Because the market, when it's volatile, you have to take a different uh, strategy. When the market is quiet, uh, you have to take a different strategy. So the market can be uptrending, and it becomes volatile, which doesn't happen that often, but it does. So you have a different strategy. If the market is downtrending, it's very weak, and suddenly you know that this market will turn into volatile market because the downtrending market turns into volatile market and it's short-lived. So all that thing I provide you for 97 for the for the whole year. So if you don't find that offer, send email and my team will send you or when you receive an offer for 97, you enroll and pay attention to that. Because what happens is you can monitor the market and you can increase your exposure based on the market condition. You can decrease your exposure. That's where the money is. Where the market is, is, is there are certain period in, in the year when the market is really good, where you accelerate your trading and you make a lot of money and then you step back because the market becomes choppy and weak or neutral that's where you step back and decrease your exposure and then when the market accelerate that's where you go back in and you increase your portfolio size so i conclude with again the perfect kick so the kick comes with the practice and i really believe in the bruce lee and trading mastery so a lot of things in, get involved in the trading mastery is the consistency. It's not like, okay, I buy 10,000 shares at 45 cents. I sold it at 75 cents. I look at me, I'm genius. And then I go buy another 15,000 shares and then it goes to zero. So that's not trading. So consistency, discipline, precision, adaptation, think about Bruce Lee, mindfulness. So uh, be very calm during the market, have patience. So the, these are the mental state. And each mental state requires a triggers a process. So each mental state. So you have to think about this. In one trade, uh, you are stalking it. So you're developing a mindset uh, for patience. You have to adopt the patience. But on the other hand, when you're executing the trade, so another trade you're executing it, you need to have a mental state of being confident. So simultaneously, you're patient in one trade and being confidence in uh, having a confidence in another trade. So, so think about it, what, what, what is needed? So I have a course, eight day course, where I go in deep into this and it's a two hour, uh, eight day, two hours. So total of 16 hours, I provide you all the resources. I provide you the test. I explain to you deep into uh, this area. So the course, I don't know what's the price I should, ask you but it's only 297 so if you if you receive that offer for eight day course i will teach you how what kind of what what you need to do for eight days and i give you the tools and the references to the books which you must read there are certain books which you should not there are certain books which like i'm making a list for my five-year-old son 
that these are the books my children must read and it, the list is growing and growing so if you are into trading mastery i give you the references to the books so you read it it will take you a while to read and, and understand but in eight days you will have enough thing to to work on believe in abundance continuously learn implement robust risk management this is very crucial uh, very crucial that you learn from your mistakes and have a proper system of uh, creating a journal and eliminating the mistakes. So I teach you that. And uh, we all believe, we know that we need to have a positive growth mindset. So I teach you for eight days and I paid a heavy price. I invested a heavy price and I learned and I'm still learning because this is a big topic. Uh, so, so if you're interested in learning, contact my team, they will send you the offer for 297. And uh, I will start somewhere next month. So there are a certain number of students and then we start. So once again, leave every person you come in contact with, with the impression of increase. So I hope you got some in value in attending today's session, Wallace Wattles. And remember, you get rich by doing things in a certain way. So Wallace Wattles. So get hold of this book called The Science of Getting Rich by Wallace Wattle is free on Google, is free on YouTube, it's a two hour and you have to read and listen again and again. So thank you and I will see you in a few days. I will teach you something else. So thank you for coming, bye.